I'm Isander. And I'm Coda. And today we're going to be covering the winners of the polls. They took a lead quick. <laughs> Real quick. And absolutely dominated. It's the Space Sharks. The Space Sharks. And it left the... The uh, Land Sharks got a space program. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> kind of. The Land Sharks are their own episode. We will do that. There are um, actually Land Sharks? Something like that. Oh, I was making a joke. However, that leaves the Leagues of Otan, the Abhumans, and the Rogue Traders in just a fight. Okay, and it's it's neck and neck. Apparently, the rogue traders are getting a video game. I didn't know that was happening. That works out great. Um, rock and stones just perpetually rock and stone. Rock and stone. They're about to get a book, from what I've heard, which might actually mean it's worth delaying the episode only so we can get that book because releasing an episode immediately outdating it. <laughs> That's a possibility there. And then the ab humans are always vibing. The ogren are dark tide. They're doing great. The ab humans are doing fine. Aren't for there more? There's more than just the ogrens. That's though, why I said ab humans. You're correct. There's way more than Ogrins, but that's an episode you have to fight for. You got to get it. Um, as always, the way that happens is by popular demand. So you sound off in the comments, you share the video to your friends, so they sound off in the comments, and um, that's how the Space Sharks got it, frankly. This is what we in the civics class would call an absolute democracy. Pretty much. Uh, we also have a Patreon where you can get a bonus episode every single week, as well as a bunch of other perks. I'm talking priority voting, access to the Discord, live streams. It just goes on and on. So if you want to help support the show and get all that stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. For those of you already there, thank you very much. For those of you signing up right now, thank you too. And let's get into the most fun Marines out there, the Space Sharks. The Space Sharks. Not going to lie, probably have some of the best art of any of the Marines. Really? It's like three pieces by one artist who I want to credit so desperately, but I can't. No, it's, it's but they, they carry the Space Sharks aesthetic so well right now. Do they? Mm-hmm. Well, first, first off. They're just one of those things where there's not a lot written about them, actually. They're, it's fairly recent they got fleshed out. However, the best place to describe them is by start by start is to start by talking about where they call home, which is, for the most part, everything we've covered in 40K has been in the galaxy. Makes sense. That's where the action is. And, you know, even though galaxies are 3D objects, for the most part, every time we depict them, they're flat. It's just easier to manage. It's just easier to manage that way. 40K is no difference. Their galaxy is... Disc- it, it, if you look at the art for it, it looks very flat. It's super duper not, but when you zoom out that far in the scale of light years... It, it basically looks- becomes a flat disc. Exactly. And that's where all the action is. That's where all the fun stuff is. That's where the Emperor is wasting away. That's where war after war is happening. That's a thing that's ripped in half. The space sharks have nothing to do with this, basically. Because the way it works is, hopefully, for those of you that are aware, we are 3D beings. That means you can go above and below said disk. Now, we know that there are bugs coming in from below. Not great. Um, it's kind of suck. Not thrilling. It really um, sucks. The space sharks are above, circling. Oh. They're, they're like in the... Like sharks. They are... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they leaned into it hard. They are in what is called the void, basically, where there are very few planets, basically no stars, and you are out... In whatever's out there's home territory, basically. And that's what they call home. There's very little supply, and there's almost always war. Frightening. Even out in the void, there's always war. It's not quiet on out on the frontier. There is nowhere that's peaceful in 40k. It's 40k. It's 40k. And that's where they tend to be, for the most part, just circling until they find their target. And if any Marines are after you, horrific day it's like three nfl players in a trench coat who can never miss a shot it's a problem it really is oh and they're faster than a car at full speed just is you don't want any marine oh yeah and they're also armored better than most tanks you don't want marines after you you really don't they're big and scary there's a reason most people who see marines uh sometimes just lose it out of fear even if they're loyal they'll just see them and go oh god oh god that's a living sherman walking at me yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but these ones are somehow worse. How? 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 Um, how? It's, they literally spit venom and eat people's brains to get memories. We're going to pull one from the Tyranids episode this time because we're going to describe what you would see if the space sharks came to help you. Because I would do it from the victim's perspective. You'll see why I didn't in a moment. Okay? <laughs> And so let's say you're commanding a war in the far reaches of space. 
you don't have help either. You're not used to being here. You don't want to be here, right? That's just, that's how it is. But you, it's 40K. You've been dragged into this fight. The emperor says, I have to win or die. There's no running away. And so you do that. And as you're fighting, you are running out of supplies. They do not seem to be running out of bodies. <laughs> there seem to be enemies popping up about as fast as you're losing bullets to take care of them. It's not looking great. And then an encrypted communication comes through to you. And it's using codes so old, you have to dust off some relics you're carrying to figure out if they're legit or not. <laughs> I'm talking borderline heresy era codes. And you're like, uh, uh, who is using 10,000 year old code? They check the codes check out. So you're like, okay, well let's hear what they have to say. And then in 40 K's version of perfect Latin, which is high Gothic because they have high and low Gothic. Um, you hear a request come through hoarse and quiet, almost impossible to hear and even harder to decipher because this isn't just Latin. It's perfect. It's like perfect Latin whispered directly into your ear. Yes. And all it's asking is, can we please join the fight? We are the emperor's sons. <laughs> now, you swear to God there's nothing around you but enemies. Suddenly, there's a ship that wasn't there before. And it has ship-sized harpoons pointed. <laughs> you say yes, partially out of fear. Because I'm not... What are you going to do with a ship-sized harpoon? Exactly. You just say, sure, 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 whatever. Please and, do not poon me. And they do, the codes check out. The, everything, all the paperwork seems right. Everything checks out. It's just old. And we can't make out the ship itself because nobody uses stuff like that anymore. It's like World War II era stuff. But they're keeping it running somehow. And it's, it's like a mishmash. It's like that one story from recently where uh, somebody set out uh, an SOS call in the middle of the ocean. And a boat from the Gothenburg 1793 came out to rescue them. Equivalent of the Gothenburg, but if they had plates from modern ships welded onto. <laughs> and you're like, oh dear, what have I summoned? <laughs> And, and then that's a perfect example. This is why you're here. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, I just added to it. Um, and so the Gothenburg arrives, basically. And on top of all of that, they claim to have a mission from the emperor himself to do this. Okay, sure. Whatever. Deal with it. Thank you. Please. Bye. A direct message from him. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Thank you. Go, go about your business. Go for it. Who am I? Who am I to impede the emperor's will? Go ahead. Exactly. And then they disappear. Well, well, where's the help? At least they didn't maim me. <laughs> you know, honestly, bullet dodge. At least they didn't maim me. You continue on a few days, and then you hear reports about 10 different attacks happening at the same time. <laughs> and they all say the same thing. Silent, massive figures walking through the battlefield and pushing far deeper into enemy territory than you ever have. There's absolutely no mercy. It doesn't matter if they give up. They just crush it and then leave with these brutal strikes. And then just as fast as they came, they completely leave dead silent. If they bump into extreme resistance, they'll also just leave. And then they'll come from a different angle. The over ultimate, and over until that thing's gone. The ultimate form of guerrilla warfare. And it's not just, oh, they leave no survivors. It's nothing. There's dust. It's... That enemy had weapons and ammo and deployments they were using. That's all gone. It's gone. It's like they hadn't set up to fight here at all. Reduced to ashes. Exactly. And this just happens over and over on every front. Slowly, the enemy stop attacking you because clearly something worse is here. And you even get reports of this one space marine who towers over dreadnoughts stalking the battlefield. He's so big... People mistake him for a Primarch, and he has these massive electrified claws that have chain swords running down the palm of them. And they leave nothing in their wake except a sea of red. My god. That's just what happens, and as fast as it started, it, the circling stops altogether. The moment it's all done, it just leaves. Well, at least they didn't get pooned. Yeah. Until the ship points directly at you. 
and starts coming directly for you. And then they board and speaking again in that perfect Latin, but politely, may we please have some armor, weapons, and recruits for the help we just gave you. And again, Space Marine standing before you, terrifying, right? This one's got scrimshawed shark teeth all over him. Um, what look like Pacific Islander tattoos all over his armor and his skin. His skin is gray and rubbery, and he's got pointed teeth himself. Shark boy really grew up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the space sharks. That's pretty much their whole gimmick. They are hunters in the ether itself, sent out eons ago in exile for something to ravage the foes of humanity until they've atoned for whatever that was. We have no idea what it is to this day. I mean, the atonement should be for those graphics in 2005. My God. Hmm? Shark Boy. I heard they're doing a reboot. Are they doing a reboot? Apparently. Yeah, this is the reboot. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's on Netflix, I think, or something like that. Uh, these ones are so much fun. And I was not joking. In canon, they do move in radio silence. In my head canon, it's definitely either the Jaws theme playing or Baby Shark. There's no in between. Those are the two options. Uh, <laughs> it's They've that- got posters on the inside of their ships and like a little postcard right on their armor that says, do it for him. And it's the one Ikea shark. Yeah. Do it for left shark. No, it's for left shark, dude. It's for left shark? Of course. You've had no. to. Well, how's it pronounced? Blage? Blage? Blage. I don't speak Swedish. There's a... Wait. Are, is there a shark in Ikea? Yeah. You know how Ikea sells plushies? Yes. They've got the shark. There's a shark. Do it for him, I guess. Do it for That's him. That's probably on there. <laughs> um, <laughs> other than the silence that they bring for intimidation factor... They also are just, it's kind of a curse that plagues them too. A lot of, a lot of the, uh, the Primarchs aren't great dads. They take after their own dad in that way. Sometimes they give their kids defects. It happens. Uh, theirs is a pretty weird one. It's a slow one that starts with them. The first phase is them becoming a complete stiff. For lack of a better term, they become coldly formal. They will only speak in high Gothic, which is that latin variant i was telling you about mm-hmm. and they they can still speak low but they really really they really, just choose really, not to yeah really don't want to their armor's always perfect they're always standing like straight it's just like they're overly formal it's you know that person who is awkward and then they also rely on formality as a way to cope as a shield that's what they become mm. and then after that a sense of mercilessness will set in they're already not very giving of quarter there's um, they are space marines yeah th- th- this time no it's just they will turn everything before them into a red mist red mist or dust one of those two it's exactly. like it's binary state and then the last one is them just succumbing to the silence of the depths itself they basically never utter a word again and they always prefer to go alone yeah and they are true loan sharks how many shark-related puns? You're going to get a lot in, actually. Let me not ask that question. This is your home field. Never mind. Uh, with that curse being said, you may wonder, who gave them this? Who, who, who's the dad that gives them this defect? Because none of them have this listed, right? I'm going to guess salamanders? Mm, no. No? Well, we have a Mori Povich situation here. Because nobody wants to claim they're the father mm. it's it's kind of tragic well they're, let's get a dna test going then uh we've tried that no <laughs> <laughs> the no. the top contenders are the night lords the raven guard and the world eaters and nobody wants to pay child support so those those are the three best guesses uh the night lords resemblance comes from th- ooh, the violence they're brutal, they're, they're brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, their remorseless tactics are something to behold and also uh there is people hold on to this one line where the space sharks are coming and it's referred somebody tells a night lord your brothers have arrived but it's 40k um space marines call each other brother more than almost anything else could be battle brother it could be like brother brother Mm -hmm. sergeant brother could be half brother twice removed so you never know that one's a bit it's an eyebrow razor for sure, but it's not anything concrete. Uh, however, they do also have a pale, death-like complexion and pitch-black eyes, like I mentioned. 
which does give the Night Lords that, more that's, points. That's pretty Night Lordy, yeah. It does also give the Raven Guard a lot of points. Uh, it does also give the Raven. And they are all about sudden sneak attacks that are debilitating. Guerrilla warfare. Mm-hmm. And that's what these guys' tactics are. However, they are far more aggressive than anything the Raven Guard have ever pulled off. So, that's where the World Eaters come I mean, in. I've seen art of a Raven Guard Space Marine with a sniper rifle. Yeah. That's not that's not Space Marine like. Usually it's I'm going to get there get in there with my chain sword and yeah. rip them to shreds. I, I love not the Raven I'm Guard. going to quick scope them. No, I love the Raven Guard because it's the equivalent of a tank five kilometers away with perfect aim, just taking things out quietly. And you're like, why? Who we'll put a silencer on the end of this thing? And is it even functional? That's what the Raven Guard's whole shtick is. Space sharks are not quiet though. So that leaves the world eaters as the last contender because of just how violent they can be. And also because uh, the whole ship to ship harpoons, that was a world eater thing. That was a world eater that thing? That was a world eater invent. Okay, think about it this way. The world eaters did it because that's a ship you're shooting me. Get closer so I can punch you. I can't. <laughs> I can't punch you from that distance. Get closer. Yeah, it's a brilliant invention. So that's why it's all up in the air. Um, they have bumped into Raven Guards ish, who called them. Who, who didn't agree with that original assumption at all. However, their DNA has been tested as Raven Guards. It's a mess. It's, it's, it's in canon. It's unknown. And or it could be all of the above. Because there's Space Marines with mixed gene, like genes going on. So it's entirely possible the weird mishmash we're seeing is because they are truly a weird mishmash of all of them. Because... It, it makes no sense. Nothing else really operates like them. Outside of canon, it's because they wanted a shark chapter. And so, those three are what you would need to mix to get a shark chapter. Let's be real here. However, in canon... It's confusing. It's confusing, and it's another one of those mysteries that's probably never going to be resolved properly. Because this, it just... It would add more questions than it would answer. It'd be cool if the space sharks were just revealed to be like, Oh, yeah, um... Here's the, uh, what is it, the second? No, not the second. and the 11th. The second and the 11th? Yeah, it could, also, it could also totally be that. Nobody knows. And with the levels, we'll get into this a bit later, but with how well they keep their gear, it's also not impossible that they're salamanders. Nobody knows. I don't know. It just seems like so salamandery. Mm -hmm. Very animal focused. Very, I'm going to hit you very hard and very large. <laughs> yeah. They are very, they are very large. They are very large. It just seems like a salamander type beat. Who knows? That's the fun of it. And that's the best modern way we have to uh, wrap our heads around this. The... Old Lord just had them pegged as Marines, but the shark variant. Marines, but the shark Marines. Which, I mean, they still kind of are, let's be honest. But uh, it was not as good back in the day. Because all that horror and dread I just described to you, uh, it gets washed away when you realize back in the day they were wearing the, you know, like the beaky armor? And they were wearing the beaky armor with like shark's teeth glued to it. And it was like pitch white. No, it was stark white with a red stripe, I think. And it had like a PNG of a shark lunging. It was, and their stealth variant was construction site orange because high vis vests are. A stealthy, I guess? They render you invisible to the natural world. OSHA doesn't want you to know this. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, 40k okay. back in the day was. Okay. Not as polished as what we have today, which is honestly fine. I've always loved seeing media I consume evolve over time and get better and more refined. And you can see them occasionally go back to the weird and pull it forward. And you're like, oh, that's okay, cool. That's back, I guess. That's okay. I mean, back in the day, if I remember correctly, the Ultramarines were traitors. Oh, yeah, you did mention I, that. I think they were a traitor legion. That's definitely... They Definitely were conquering, not. and then Dad showed up, and he said, join me, and they said, no. Definitely not canon at all anymore, but that's the kind of stuff that 40k has. If you've played League at all for the last 10 years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Did Old it, League was something else. It just started as like, a, oh yeah, here are these cool champions in, in, a, in a fight, there's duking be, it out. And now it's summoners. just a bunch of random universes that are like all doing their own thing, and it's just like, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, I, I, League is... 
Yeah, that, I don't that's like the best League, example. but I do really like the uh, juxtaposition between Piltover and Zong. I think I, I like Piltover yeah, and Zong. Everybody likes Arcane. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, Sharima interests me. The sand. This, yeah, that's also fun. I would love to see more of that. This kind of uh, formative nature of the space sharks is really contrasted when you look at what they are today, because, like I mentioned, they were kind of doofy. <laughs> Um, but nowadays, uh, it's slate gray armor it's across the board. It's like it's still the old heresy stuff. It's still old, but they use it for a different reason now. It's okay. The heresy was a mess. There was war happening everywhere. We didn't know if we could get parts anywhere on time. So heresy armor specifically was made. You could glue this together, and it would work. Like if you kill another marine, you can slap pieces off of that onto this, and it'll work just fine. That's why they have all of the rivets all over, like. Thirty uh, k armor because yeah. it's just like this is literally just riveted together. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but they also recently ish, uh, thanks to an author whose name escapes me, but I want to credit them too. Um, he gave them kind of um, they kind of rip from uh, just general Pacific Islander culture now too. Uh, a lot of their names do. They have the, those tattoos going, which is an awesome design. But first of all, let's just start there because they have like you know great great whites are like that bluish gray up top and then the white beneath. Mm-hmm. That's, so they have that bluish gray all over them, and then like the white for the tattoos. I love that. That's so, it's insanely cool. When do we get Jason Momoa as a space shark in the I, next 40k film? It has to happen. It has to happen. And um, the way, there's no better way to put it, and the visual in this segment is going to help a lot too, um, but the way Space Marine armor is shaped, it's kind of like two U's. One that goes from behind your neck up in front, and then another that goes, again, from behind your neck up above your head. That's kind of how it works. And it's like a, a weird... It's it's a it's a part of the armor, because it's very big and bulky, even on Space Marines, because they have to get shot at a lot. <laughs> so you want that armor big and bulky. And it also is because Space Marine armor can attach all kinds of stuff to it, from massive bags to jetpacks. So... It's going to be larger than your average human frame, and that's kind of a result of that. It's also really solid face protection. So even if they're wearing a helmet, it'll always kind of, you'll have those two U's over and behind, I mean, under and behind almost every Marine. That's perfectly normal stuff. If you watch F1, it's a Hans device, effectively. Just think of it as a Hans device. Hans device? The head and neck device. It's so that they don't instantaneously die when that car goes from an obscene speed to zero. To nothing. Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of the time, they just, it, it would, the, the stoppage would just kill them. F1's a really dangerous sport. It's a really, da- like, my favorite thing is, side tangent, they, 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 they fairly recently got this ring device, and it looks like it does absolutely nothing, but somehow it has saved, well, not somehow, when the car flips over saves their life by adding something that gets crushed instead of them i mean that makes sense yeah it's really cool stuff it's like uh, crunch points on any no 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 it doesn't sorry it doesn't crunch it makes contact so they don't have to Mm. it's actually very rigid yeah yeah it's really cool stuff but yes for lack of a better term space marines have those massive head and neck devices oh so it's more like a roll cage weird yeah Uh, about as light as you can make a roll cage anyway because that's what matters (laughs) that's what matters in f1 it's just Um, like go as fast as possible this thing weighs like two pounds i could lift it myself Exactly. Space Marines don't worry about weight reduction. <laughs> it, it does not matter in the least. The reason I'm mentioning this oddly specific tidbit about their armor is because, for the most part, it leads to really weird designs sometimes. Like, there's a lot of portraits of Primarchs where they look small until you zoom out and you're like, oh dear, he's massive. His head just looks tiny in that enclosure. The Space Sharks kind of made it work better than anyone else I've ever seen because what they've done is or at least a lot of the art for them, has, has made that lead. Those two U's, they've put shark teeth all over them. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And so, you know you know, you know, know when a shark is breaching water and it's got its maw wide open? Mm-hmm. It looks like it's a space marine staring at you from the jaws of an open shark. I love that. And it looks so cool. I love that. It looks so cool. They have all kinds of um, other scrimshawed stuff on them, too. They, I think they actually have shark teeth, too. I'm not sure how you'd get them that far away from everything, but... Do they have just one weird water world out there in the void? No. They only no? have one world that they kind of... Temp- we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We're gonna, we'll get to that. But yeah, so a lot of their their stuff has that going on. A lot of art has it. And my favorite piece of art for them is actually that uh, massive fellow who will not be named this episode. 
<laughs> I can feel it being typed though. Um, and he's looming over somebody with those claws I mentioned, ready. And it, the way his body is twisted, it, it looks like he's lunging at you. Make sure you put that piece up, it's really cool. It's not just a shark look either that they go for. In combat, they do circle their prey and observe them slowly, trying to find all the weak points and then just going in. They really are just sharks. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite scenes of them has them, I believe, flying very, very, very close to a sun to hide in the solar flares as they're going about. Oh, that's why their stealth variants are painted bright orange. It's to blend in with the sun. <laughs> sure. You found a reason. Let's go with that. Um, when they fight, they do also fight in complete silence. I not joking, they, they do communicate because you have to communicate orders, but it's over a very encrypted channel and it's not a lot. It's not, how are you doing? It's, we need you to move here. I mean, to be fair, I don't think I've ever heard a shark speak during a feeding frenzy. Yeah, pretty much. They keep it stum. These guys keep it stum too. They also have, uh, their psychers are really on the nose. Um, they can instill a crushing fear of the depths, for lack of a better term, into somebody. And so you'll occasionally, when you're fighting them, you'll just hear somebody howl like they're being drowned. <laughs> and if that's not bad enough, a real shark mouth can just appear beneath them and take them away. Because their psychers can do that too. I love how hard they've leaned into this they've gimmick. really leaned into I this gimmick. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Another canon-ish, this one dubious at best, um, they, they can get hit with this battle blindness kind of a situation where it's like because when sharks attack they roll their eyes back and expose this cartilage thing if you can't tell i was a shark week kid um they roll their eyes back to god yeah this is gonna be a shark episode to protect them and there's this bit of cartilage that gets exposed really neat stuff you can sucker punch it in the face all you want it's not gonna hurt its eyes however completely blind and so that's kind of the trade-off they make and the way they did that for the space sharks, again, canonish, this one I couldn't find hard sources for, is occasionally they'll get caught up in the frenzy and just become this hazard for friend or foe. It's just almost like, like they can't see what's going on. Swinging wildly, I can't see anything. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And that's also part of the world eater stuff, because it's like, yeah, world eaters of do that. Of course the world eaters do that. You see These why are the it's... the people who madly scream, blood for the blood god. You see why it's hard to find somebody to put this thousand years of child support bill to? It's pretty difficult. And um, on top of that, they don't spare anything or anyone, really. Um, they are hunters out in the void, meaning they don't get resupplies often. So they've gotten very good at scavenging. It's become part of their standard issue procedure. It's not an intimidation tactic like the silence or the violence. This is just something they've learned to do because you need to. Just like, I need food. If I don't get food from doing this, mm -hmm. I will not be able to eat for the next time. Anything months. that can be repurposed or even can't be, they will take and use it to mend what they have because they use stuff that is actually 10,000 years old because of the ease of use and modularity. So they will... Often just strip battlefields clean and then stash whatever they can't use for later. Everything they can use, they will immediately put to use, which is also why their armor is, it looks like heresy stuff, but that's eh, not quite right. And their ship looks old, but mm, not quite right either. <laughs> it's been ship of Theseus to modern spec. Yeah, yeah. And it's everything in their armory too. If they were a modern day army, they would be in land cruisers with AKs. Because they work, and we know how to fix them, and we've known how to fix them. That would be the space sharks. It's just the most... They are literally just perfect guerrilla warfare. They know what they need to do. Raven guard allegations. Raven guard allegations. You see where it comes from. Yeah. Um, they. However, there is a point where you can't fix something. You know, Everything has an expected lifespan, from people to objects. And you can prolong it through meticulous maintenance like going to the gym every day but however there is a day that you'll croak that's just how that works and so whenever that does happen they have the ability to levy tithes to get the job done to replenish what they cannot fix anymore or get out in the in the void um there's two of them uh the red tithe is as bad as it sounds <laughs> <laughs> um they are they and i'm going to specifically use the word harvest here entire populations 
to be used as either forced labor or initiates who fight it out to see who becomes the next space shark. It's really brutal stuff. It, at its worst, it's been recorded entire generations have disappeared. Mm hmm. It's 40k still sucks, baby. You get to choose your flavor. Do you want it Pacific Islander and shark themed? Yeah, it still kind of blows. You still wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> you still wouldn't want to meet them in a dark alley. It's a thing. It's still bad. <laughs> yeah, they can do this anywhere, basically, so long as nobody else is using them. So if that planet's already slated by Gilliman for Ultramarines, they can't just roll up and say Red Tithe, because <laughs> no. But it is a power they have. So they can roll up to, let's say, um, backwards worlds that haven't been given a full duty yet and go, do you pay the smothering tithe? And if not... God, I hate the smothering t I had to throw that in, just to spite you. They will occasionally... Can you tell what's in my deck? Um, they will also occasionally... He's paid that a lot. They will also do the same to prison worlds, where... Because um, the Imperium has prison worlds where they're like stamping out license plates, basically. Those don't count. But the ones where they're just kind of loitering around... I would figure... I mean, Earth has an Australia... <laughs> Don't spite them. I like Australians. I like Australians, too. They've come so far. <laughs> they've come so far. They've been doing fine. <laughs> they, 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 they've been doing just fine for themselves. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but if, if the prison world doesn't have a hard use, they can walk up and say, do you pay the smothering tithe? And that's it. They can just take them away in the night. And they will be used for everything they are worth to the space sharks before they are completely thrown away. It's not kind. The Grey Tithe is a little bit better, I won't lie. Because, like I said, they pick up all kinds of stuff. Some of it they can't use, right? The Mechanicus can, though. And so they have a Grey Tithe of the Mechanicus where they go, we got this stuff. You uh, got fix stuff. it. No, no. Uh, you can take this ancient stuff that we frankly don't want or like need. Like We have a receipt printer from 2008. And the Mechanicus goes, glorious. We'll give you all the guns you want. And... It's a, it's a pretty sweet deal. The Mechanicus gets to learn and reverse engineer stuff, and they get the stuff they need to continue hunting. No, knowing the Mechanicus, it's more just like, I have this um, Arby's receipt from 2008. Do you want it? And the Mechanicus is just like, mm, a, great a great item to add to my spank bank. And that's, that's, <laughs> God, you and mental flashbangs. <laughs> they, yeah, it's, that's pretty much exactly how it works with them and the Mechanicus. Uh, it's a really kind of fair deal, on that one is at least. Uh, if things get very, very dire, they have a treaty set up with this uh, rogue faction of space marines. Uh, rogue space marines are ones who have not gone full villain. Don't like the Emperor, though. So they're kind of off doing their own thing. If you're a Star Wars fan, think the Grey <laughs> Jedi. Exactly. That are technically not canon anymore, but you know what? Thank you, company I shall not mention. <laughs> um, so they, they will go up to these um, now you, want me to, you almost made me call them gray but these rogue space marines and they will trade for whatever they need weapons, recruits, armor but they really only do this when they have to because it's really dicey working with them because best case scenario it's a raw deal worst case scenario violence ensues okay so never mind it's more like summoning a purple spirit in Dark Souls yep yeah. okay yeah um, however, it's all singularly focused. They don't have any side stuff going on, really. It's just to fight in the dark against the things that we rather not think about every day. <laughs> That's all they do. This has given them very few stories. However, what they do have is really good. Like, my favorite one is mm, they captured this Dark Eldar. And for those of you that don't know, Dark Eldar are just <laughs> elves. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> They're elves who stave off death by being as depraved as you can get. Uh, what you say is violating the Geneva Conventions. They call foreplay. That's... It's... Yeah. Yeah. Um, what you call crimes against humanity, they call a good Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, how do you get information out of a person like that? <laughs> because... Torture for them. They're kind of waiting for it. They're, they're laying into They Do it. Do it. Please do it. I, I've done worse on Tuesdays. Mm, the bone saw. How, can, how, how very pedestrian of you. So you know what the space sharks did? 
locked him in a room with nothing. <laughs> they gave him the, the, the padded room straight jacket treatment? Mm-hmm. This guy was pretty solid, though. So he kept hurling insults through the door. <laughs> Just keeping himself entertained by doing that and taunting them for ages because most captors will come in and beat the brakes off you for that. And he's like, please, please. Please, do it. Yeah, do it. Um, so they upped the ante and stopped cleaning the room altogether. And they stopped sending people in to give food. Huh. So they just left him with a bucket in the corner and food would just slide in and the plates would never get taken out. He never got to see any other person. With the only thing for entertainment being a painting on the door that says, knock when you're ready to talk. <laughs> this poor Eldar tries, which is sentence, uh, this, this Eldar tries composing poetry or even just basking in the memories of when he had freedom, which are, again, memories to him, trauma to others. <laughs> That's how it works for them. However, nothing would work because what is an artist without an audience? And these blank walls don't care less. On top of all of that, it's kind of hard to compose poetry when you know that bucket is getting fuller every day. And they haven't been here for a while. What happens then? <laughs> That's where he's left. Mm -hmm. And so it's a pretty raw deal. Thankfully, thankfully, this Eldar realized something. He's hot. Like all fictional elves, they're always dope always stupendously hot that's how they work um and even though they stripped him of his armor and his clothes and his claws he was still absolutely striking if he could get them to open the door surely they'd realize the sheer specimen before them completely gorgeous in every way and brilliant too and completely lay down their weapons forget about that emperor and begin serving me in all my glory he tried to charisma check confirmed bachelor them confirmed bachelor additional dialogue option so yeah yeah and he knocked on the door and waited in the buff smiling like a king eager to meet his new subjects and i mean like head tilted slightly up because you know royalty doesn't look at the peasantry in the eyes you know which is a fan he was hitting the lean against the wall just like hey legs spread wide <laughs> kind of yeah uh, the good thing is, because he was looking away from them, he didn't get to make eye contact with the only thing that came through the door. A massive fire hose. <laughs> Which they then drenched. It was, this is a fire hose with a force to push, slam him against the wall. And just all the debris that came from him living in this room was just swirled around, baby. Oof. And then they shut the door on him. They made they made uh, Dookie Eldar soup. Yeah, and then and then they shut the door on him. I love this guy's arrogance though, because he he well before they shut the door, I love his arrogance because he gets up and he goes, oh, "If you wanted to clean the room, there's better ways to do it. Come on, guys." And they, I'm not joking. The space sharks there could not care less. Just sh shut the door. No, I'm I'm talking not even a twinge of frustration, just stone cold. They may as well have been statues. This bores them. He hasn't heard a word in days. And so they just slammed the door shut on him. And he's he's there, stuck and he's with... left, alone. And S soaking wet mm -hmm. in, a, in a puddle of dookie Eldar soup. Well, to be fair, it was a very powerful hose. It did, like, it did, it, it genuinely did kind of clean the room. So, you know, slight positives. <laughs> Downside is, um, there is something really off about this ship because... Ships make noise. Machines were, you can hear vents. Cars make noise, for God's sake. Ships definitely make a lot of noise. Uh, this one doesn't. <laughs> hmm. It's completely silent, and Eldar have pretty solid hearing. He should have been able to hear tw two of their heartbeats in each of their chests going, you know, because space marines have two hearts, they're off rhythm. He should have. Didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Meaning, it's entirely possible <laughs> they, they induced short-term cardiac arrest to fuck with this guy. <laughs> it's either that or they're very good at keeping it quiet i'm not sure which that's so petty yep the ship is pin drop silent he's not even sure if they're still moving <laughs> i love them do you see why and do you see like the night lord kind of oh i know how to break you they put so much effort into making sure okay what would a dark Eldar hate? Zero stimulation. Yeah, 
And so they do that. It's just nothing, nothing, nothing at all. There's no, there is no surprise. There's no nothing. He tries over and over again. Like he tries to be coy and stuff and it, just, it never works. They just firm it every time. Though eventually he does think he makes some progress um, because they do take him to a different room. Like they, and they strap him to this chair and he's like, oh, thank God, finally the torture begins. Jesus, I've been waiting for it ever let's get to it and it's like it's like a college chair and everything so he's expecting the whole nine yards in this domed room and then they leave oh and as they leave the shutters begin to open and he's left wondering they're not just going to show me the raw warp are they <laughs> are they <laughs> and and as it opens he sees something far worse the night sky Oh, but the night sky outside of the galaxy. Facing away from the Milky Way. The empty. There's not a star to be seen. <laughs> What's described as coming out of the room starts as laughter and ends as crying. It's so amusing to me. That's a brutal... Yeah. They, they, they don't play. There's so much fun. <laughs> There's so much fun. Um, it is not all sunshine and rainbows, though. Well, quite obviously. No, yeah, it's it's obvious to see why they're so popular. Uh, they do have some cons, though. First and foremost, uh, if you were not like me and look forward to, and looked forward to Shark Week every year on Discovery, they may not appeal to you. I get that. It's not everyone's vibe. That's fully fair. If also you don't like just you know like oceanic vibes, kind of um. Uh, the Polynesian aesthetic they have going on nowadays. Or you're like extremely thalassophobic. Yeah, exactly. Th which, to be fair, I don't know how they didn't have that theme before. It makes so much sense. It's one of those things that gave that guy a bonus. <laughs> that was brilliant. But if that's not your thing, that you know, they're not really going to appeal to you because they do do what the tin says. They are space sharks. Yeah. Um, they also have this habit of being hated specifically by Eldar players, but generally by alien players because... When they join a story, they have ultramarine syndrome of spotlight on me now. I'm going to jobber everything that's around me. Thank you very much. And I, I get it. If you're not into that, it's kind of sucks. Like, oh, yay, the Eldar are being mad. Oh, nope, here are the space sharks. And they've locked them in a room now. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of, those are the cons to them. However, I am curious. Now that you know the pros and the cons, what do you think? I... I kind of like them. I kind of like them a lot. Really? Yeah. They're, I mean, I have extreme thalassophobia, but also I still really, really, really like, really like the theming. Like, they're just, like, terror on an, like, unknown level. And also the the continuing theme of, like, sharks in space, especially with using the depths of the abyss, the space abyss instead of the, the, the ocean abyss. Mm -hmm. To terrify people, just it makes sense. And I love the way they walk around and just cast pocket philosophy at people. <laughs> you weren't afraid of water? Now you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to suck. I love it so much. Uh, that does wrap up our episode today on the Space Sharks. We will see you next week for the Patreon episode. That's going to be more Street Sharks. And the following week for whoever wins. Street Sharks? I said Street Sharks. I stand by it. Street Sharks? If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Did they Do you get, not like, know the street sharks? No. What? No. Wait, hold on, hold on. It's it's a, it's a '90s toy line. You don't remember this? Well, I don't think it's the '90s even. I think it's older, but it's no. like original Transformers era. No. You don't know the street? Wait, are you serious? Yeah. I oh okay. <laughs> I thought that would be a ubiquitous reference. I'm sorry. No. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, other people might get it, but not oh, me. Oh, other people will get it. They'll be shocked <laughs> that you didn't get it, frankly. I don't know how... I entirely realize I'm the weirdo here. Okay. Well, yeah. But you can reference Ikea plushies by <laughs> by their hex code. That's like those people who have very specific, like, oh, yeah, Lego type. And then they just give you this thing and you look it up and it's like, oh, that's a cutting insult. Have you, it's like that level. You don't know about the blush? No, I don't. I didn't. And somehow, oh, you know what? And it's, I don't know about the street sharks. It's, it's fine. It's okay. We all have our blind spots. Um, thank you guys for watching this episode. And thank you for the plaque that we just got in the mail recently. Uh, there's going to be some B-roll up 
right now, and none of that would be possible without you. We are figuring out where to put it in the studio, but it will be visible somewhere soon. Yes, so, the studio will be going through some changes sometime. When soon, the, Within the next couple of months, very soon. soon and we'll have a space for it, because, you know, you can't really mount... It's the, it's the abyss. You can't mount a plaque on the abyss. Well, we, I could pull off some stuff. <laughs> but it'd be have difficult. A, a fishing line running from the ceiling down. Maybe. But <laughs> none of that would be possible. This, this wouldn't be a problem we'd be solving without you guys, so... Thank you so much for giving me good problems to solve. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you next week for the episode on... Hmm, something. Something. As always, thank you for being you.